today we're talking about tax strategies that you can implement after the year is over. Now, if you've been listening to us for a while, watching our videos, you know that we stress that most tax planning ends on 1231. But with that being said, there are some opportunities yet. If you're listening to this now, you probably haven't quite implemented everything or didn't get everything implemented by 1231. And here we want to touch on some things that are available to you now after the year is over, some things you can do prior to filing your tax return. So the first thing we're going to talk about is more on the retirement side, and this is going to be on the personal or business, but we're going to talk first about some retirement options that are available to you. The first retirement option that's available is a traditional or a Roth IRA. And for 2023, the amount that you can put into there is $6,500. Now you have up until April 15th to make these contributions and apply them towards 2023. That with a Roth contribution, there is no tax benefit going into it. So it's an after tax contribution. But with a traditional IRA, you do get a tax deduction going into it. So if you're looking to say, hey, looking to put some money towards retirement, forgot to do it before 1231, but still want to kind of take advantage of some opportunities available, just a little bit amount up to $6,500, you can use a traditional IRA and get that deduction as long as you make that contribution prior to April 15th or whenever you file your tax return, whichever is earlier. So if you file your tax return on March 15th or March 10th, you would have to make that contribution prior to filing that return. But the latest that you can do it is April 15th of this year. Now, let's talk about the business side and some of the retirement options that are available to business owners. With a business plan, you have traditionally an employee contribution and an employer contribution. Any plans that have an employee contribution are no longer available. The employee contribution would have had to have been made before 1231. But with that being said, there are still some opportunities for the employer contributions. So this is as the employer, what you're contributing to the retirement accounts. That could be a profit share, that could be a SEP IRA, that could be a solo 401k, whatever it might be, it might be a match. You have up until the tax filing deadline for your tax return. So you have up until you file your tax return, including extensions. So let's say the year of sole proprietorship and you decided that you want to contribute to a SEP IRA and put away some money towards retirement, you want to go over and above the $6,500 limit with a traditional IRA, you have some profit that you're looking to offset a little bit with, and you want to use a retirement to help do that. You could fund, and let's say that you're not, you filed an extension for your tax return, so you're not filing on April 15th. Let's say now you're going to file that return out in August or September. As long as you make that contribution, the employer contribution, prior to filing your tax return, including any extensions that can be applied to tax year 2023. So this is oftentimes an option that's available to business owners if they still have some decent income, some decent profit that they're looking to offset some of that income with, you can contribute to a retirement plan. So let's look at some of the options again on the retirement side. You have a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Contributions for 2023 need to be made to those before your filing date or the latest of April 15th. So if you file in February, you need to make those contributions before you file. But the latest that you can do them would be April 15th. So even if you extend your tax return and you don't have to file now till October, you would have had to have made those traditional IRA or Roth IRA contributions prior to that original due date, not including extensions. So that's for just a traditional IRA, Roth IRA on the personal side. The next option is employee contributions. Those no longer available. If you wanted to make a contribution to retirement plan as an employee of a business, those need to have been made by 1231. But there's still some opportunities for employer contributions. And this is really where the benefit comes into play for small business owners. So if you're a small business owner, you have more profit than you expected this year, and you're looking to offset some of that, you could do a SEP IRA, employer contribution, a solo 401k employer contribution, or any type of profit sharing or anything like that. And you have up until you, the, you file your tax return, including extensions. So you talked about the traditional IRA, Roth IRA does not include extensions, but for the employer contributions to a business return, you have up until you file your tax return, including extensions. So if you file your business return in February, you'd have to have those contributions made by that filing date. But if you file an extension and you don't file your business tax return until the beginning of September, and you then you would have up until the beginning of September to make those employer contributions and record them on the business tax return. So some really powerful stuff, especially if you were kind of last minute forgot, you missed out on some of the opportunities that would have been available to you if you would have implemented the before 1231. 
retirement is definitely some options available to you. Now let's talk about business owners and businesses themselves. First off, we want to still be talking about complete your bookkeeping and go through your bookkeeping. Make sure you have everything that was available to you recorded. Because so many times we see business owners when they didn't do their bookkeeping, they're late on their bookkeeping, they're just compiling a bunch of stuff to get over to their account. They miss out on tax strategies that are available to them, but they're rushing everything. So that's why we say going into 2024 here, get your bookkeeping, stay on your bookkeeping, do your bookkeeping on a regular basis, but that's moving forward. Now we've been in that situation where maybe you rush together some bookkeeping, go through it, fine tooth comb it, make sure that you have everything that you're allowed in there. And again, we want to talk about this concept of maximizing deductions. As a business owner, we get this great opportunity that anything that has a business purpose is a valid business deduction. We get to run that through the business pre-tax and it reduces our income, which reduces our taxable income. So when we talk about maximizing deductions, we're talking about this concept of taking spending that we're already doing and moving it from a personal expense, finding a business purpose and moving it into a business expense. And that's what we talk about when we talk about maximizing deductions. Now, the year's already over, so we can't create expenses that never occurred. We can't just say, oh, I I was going to or thought about buying a computer in 2023. It's 2024 now. I never bought the computer until now, so I'm just going to take it then because I thought about it then. No, the expense would have had to have occurred in 2023, but this still provides some planning opportunities. Are there expenses that you paid for personally that actually had a business purpose? Make sure we're taking advantage of those and the bookkeeping of your business so that we're getting a tax deduction for those. Some common ones are a home office deduction. Home office deduction is expenses that you're going to have no matter what. Whether you're a business owner or now, you're paying for your home. The benefit of being a business owner is that with a home office, you get a deduction for that. That's a deduction that you can take after the year. Now, there's specific ways on how you need to take the home office, whether you're an S corporation or just operating as a normal business. And we talk about home office and everything you need to know about that. But just know that if you are a small business owner and you work out of your house and you have a specific area that's used exclusively for your business, you should be qualifying for a home office and make sure you take that deduction. Go through our training on home office to make sure you're doing everything properly there. But most business owners. Very rarely do we find a business owner that would not qualify as a home office. So make sure you're taking advantage of that deduction on your tax return. Because again, those expenses are already spent. That rent you paid, those utilities you paid, that mortgage interest you paid, all of those expenses were already paid in 2023. Now we just need to make sure that we record it properly and make sure that we get it on the business books and our business tax return. Automobile deduction. Now we can't go out and buy a automobile here in 2024 and apply it to 2023. That ship has already sailed. But if you have a vehicle that you use for the business, at least a portion of your business, maybe it's a personal vehicle and you use it for your business, we can still get a deduction for that. We can get a deduction for mileage or actual, depending on which method we do. And again, we have podcasts, we have a blog post, we have YouTube videos, everything kind of explaining this automobile deduction. But that is something that's still available after you end. If you used a personal vehicle for business purposes, make sure you're taking advantage of that and make sure you're recording it properly on your bookkeeping as well as your tax return. And again, depending on how you're set up, whether you're an S corporation, sole proprietorship, partnership, all those different things, you're going to be reporting this activity differently. So just make sure that you are doing that correctly and looking into that correctly. So those are some of the big things on the business side. One, get your bookkeeping done. If you haven't done it yet, get that bookkeeping done. But once it's done, make sure you look through it. Make sure you review it. Make sure you are ensuring that every expense that occurred in 2023 is reflected on that bookkeeping. Go through your personal statements. Go through your personal spending and say, is there anything in here that was business related that I accidentally paid for personally, forgot about personally? Let's make sure that we're getting all of those activities put into your bookkeeping to make sure we're taking full advantage of that. Now, if you're set up as an S corporation, remember, we got to use an accountable plan to handle this reimbursement. And you can offset some owner draws on your bookkeeping file to get that expense if you need to do that. And those are things that we can do after year end. Let's be sure that we're looking through and saying, was there any spending done over here that actually had a business purpose? And if so, let's make sure we have record of that. Let's make sure we have support to back that up. And let's make sure that we have that reflected within our bookkeeping file and we're taking full advantage of what's available to us there. Again, home office deduction, the majority of businesses that we talk to should qualify for a home office deduction. So go to our training on that. Go to our video. Go to our YouTube video on that. Go to our podcast episode, our blog post, and learn about the home office and make sure you're doing that properly and taking advantage of that. Again, any business use of a personal automobile, make sure we're definitely taking advantage of that. 
The last thing we want to talk about on this business side, and I say business side, this would also be for real estate professionals, real estate uh, people that are in real estate, rental properties, whatever it might be, is you can still utilize a cost segregation study to, in, to increase the amount of depreciation you're able to take. And you're able to use, you can do a cost seg study here in 2024 and use that to apply against 2023. So if you're in real estate, you maybe you bought a new rental property and you're looking to get into the cost seg space, you still have opportunities to do a cost seg study and apply that to the 2023 tax return. So one other item I want to talk about, and that's the health savings account. Now, everybody knows that we absolutely love the health savings account. I think it's a tool that every single person should be utilizing as long as you qualify. I deductible health plan. Every person should be utilizing this because it's almost like a retirement plan on steroids. Now, the health savings account, you can still fund your health savings account after the year's over. You have until up until April 15th to fund that health savings account, or if you file earlier than that, you'd have to have that contribution made by the time of filing. So health savings account, definitely something that you should be taking advantage of if you qualify and you should be maxing out if numbers make sense. Okay, so let's go through some of the revisit, some of the ideas on due dates and things like that. Let's talk about the first due date, which is April 15th or your filing date. If you file before April 15th, it's going to be that date. Otherwise, the last day to do it is April 15th. This would be a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA contributions or a health savings account. Now, what about due dates for the filing date? And this would include extensions. So this would be things you need to have implemented by the time you file your tax return, including extensions. These are going to be employer contributions to retirement plans and the business strategies we mentioned, maximizing deductions, home office deduction, automobile, cost sector, making sure that we're kind of taking advantage of all of those opportunities that are available to us. Now, remember, one thing that we preach all the time on our podcast, on our Tax Savings TV YouTube channel, is to be on top of your tax planning. We say once 1231 hits, most strategies get thrown out the door, and that's true. But I did want to do this episode to say, okay, if you're in a pinch, if you didn't do that, maybe you're just now listening to us. Maybe you're just now catching our content and you're behind the game. There are some opportunities available to you. And that's what we wanted to outline here is what those opportunities are. Again, fund retirement, traditional IRA, Roth IRA. You can no longer make employee contributions to retirement plans, but you can still make employer contribution to retirement plans up until the filing date of that business tax return. Business items, complete your bookkeeping maximize deductions, do a go through your personal spending. Was there anything that was business related? We want to make sure that we have documentation to help support that, but make sure we're taking advantage of that because so many things that we do as business owners in our everyday life is surrounded around our business. We go to lunch with colleagues. We go to lunch with people. We talk about our business. We have board meetings with our family. There's so much spending that we do that is business related. We want to make sure we have documentation of that and make sure that we have support to back it up and make sure that we're taking it the correct way based on how our entity is set up. This includes things like meals, travel, all of those types of items, office expenses, printer, different things like that, including home office deduction, personal use, or business use of a personal automobile, making sure we're taking advantage of that. If you're in real estate, you still have the opportunity or, or, or to do a cost segregation study if you want high upfront depreciation in that initial year. And we can also do a cost seg study. Even if you bought a property four years ago, we can still do a cost seg study now today on that as well. So if you're into real estate, you're looking for some depreciation to help offset some passive income or you're a real estate professional, want to create some deductions to offset some ordinary income, look into a cost seg study, great opportunities there. And again, the final piece, health savings account. We think everybody should be maximizing and utilizing a health savings account because it's like a retirement plan on steroids and even better. And so you have up until your filing date or April 15th is the latest deadline for that as well. So again, let's talk about due dates. The April 15th, or if you fire earlier, that would be the date, would be your traditional IRA or Roth IRA funding, as well as the health savings account. And you have up until your filing date of your business tax return, including extensions to make employer contributions. This would be employer contributions to a SEP, solo, profit sharing, 401k, all those different items, as well as you have up until your filing date, including extensions to take advantage of all those business, maximizing deductions, home office, automobile, those types of items, as long as the spending has already occurred. Again, we can't make up spending for 2024. If we didn't spend the money, it's no longer available. But if we spent the money, there's still opportunity to take advantage of that as long as that spending occurred in 2023. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully as well, this is just a, a kind of a swift reminder that 
We need to start doing tax planning now for 2024 today. Let's not have to worry about this. I hope next year, if you're listening to this episode, you're taking advantage of some of the things we talk about here. I hope next year you don't have to listen to this episode because you were already on top of that tax planning way before, way ahead of time. You've already got that completed. So that's my goal. That's my hope for you. I want to thank you for listening and I will see you next week as we continue to dive into what can we do here in 2024 to ensure that we're paying the least amount in taxes as legally possible. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review and share with other business owners. You can find previous episodes and more information at www.taxsavingspodcast.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.